Facebook Live. I've arrived. Let's get ready to get it in. Code Reader B in the building. Um, hallelujah. That's the plan. That is the plan. So let's get it in. Here we go. Andre Woods in the building. What's up? Family member. Mother. There you go. There you go. Nicole Faithful. Woo! Conference muted. Conference recording started. Boss Doss in the building. Hey, Keelan wasn't the first one, man, breaking records around here. It was his daddy. Yeah. Hmm. It's in the DNA, y'all. Um, here we go, y'all. <clears throat> Let's go to uh Yakanon uh three, y'all. Yakanon three. Yakanon three. That's uh John three, y'all. Let's get it in. Okay. Um, and I say the 25th verse, 3 and 25. Um, let's pray. Spirit of the Most High, we love you. Uh, we need you. Uh, depending on you to send the relevant word to this year, your children that we may grow thereby by the foolishness of preaching that you save your people. A conversation. A yali conversation with the word being the topic of the conversation can change one from from life to death to transform one from life to death causing one to be a new creation um, in you send that conversation and we'll govern ourselves accordingly and this the, the believer the believer confesses in the matches name of Yahushua Messiah, we only pray. <clears throat> hallelujah, hallelujah, and all may. Let's rock, y'all. Um, that look what that did. Oh, it's too late. It went black. Anyway, then there arose a question between some of. Yachanan's disciples and the Jews about uh, purifying, ceremonial washings, right? And they came on to Yachanan and said unto him, Rabbi, uh, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizes and all men come to him. Yachanan answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said I am not the Mashiach, but that I am sent before him. Hmm. He that hath the, the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease um uh mutual phone uh frank um i'm gonna read another version before i really dive in right i just i want y'all to get this right it said an argument developed between some of john's disciples 
and a certain Jew over the matter of ceremonial washings. And they came to John and said on him, Rabbi, that man who was with you on the other side of the Jordan, the one you testified about, look, he is baptizing everyone. He's baptizing everyone that's going uh, to him. And everyone is going, um, and everyone is going to him. To this, John replied, "A person can receive only what is given them from heaven. You yourself can testify that I said, mute your phone, Frank. Thanks, boss." To this, John uh, replied, "A person can receive only what is given them from heaven." You yourselves can testify that I said I am not the Messiah, but I am sent ahead of him. The bride belongs to the bridegroom. The friend who attends the bridegroom, the friend who attends uh, the bridegroom waits and listens for him and is full of joy when he hears the bridegroom's voice. That joy is mine. And is, and it is now complete. He must become greater, and I must become less. Um, Yachanan, John, right, was the last prophet in in Torah, in the Old Testament. He was the last one, and you know the Messiah's opinion of him said, there's none greater than him that was born of a woman. And he said, but he is uh, at least in the kingdom is greater than him because they were, he was speaking of the bride, the product that came from the completion of Torah. In other words, like when sin came on the scene, all kind of ceremonial things start happening. And it's even pre-law. It's even pre-law. There were, you know, animal sacrifices and all kind of stuff was going on, which were all shadows. It was like a carnal way of dealing with man concerning spiritual things. You know, you sin, you did an animal sacrifice and all that old fun stuff. Eventually, the Most High ran into a man by the name of Abraham that dealt with him according uh, to faith. In other words, this was a man that obeyed him. That obeyed him on a whole nother level and trusted him. And that's what he was looking for. So he established salvation through that process of faith. The same type of faith that um, Abraham had. Well, again, unfortunately, after the Most High entered into a covenant agreement, with Abraham, that the Messiah will be born through his bloodline. Uh, his children wasn't like him. You know, they they were they were wicked like everybody else. To be honest with you, they're his chosen people, and they had the outer appearance relationship with him, but they didn't keep his commandments, and they didn't they didn't they didn't follow him, and they ended up dropping the ball. So he allowed them to go into captivity because they broke the covenant agreement. And then he allowed them to be shipped into slavery and scattered into the four corners of the earth as, as a way of, as a way of um, punishment. And we go down to John represented that, 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 that ministry. What's up, Cliff? But John represented, Yachanan represented, you know, that, that ministry, the old ministry, which were filled with shadows and types, wardrobes and beers and, and clothing and ceremonials and just all this fun stuff, right? You know, they represented the um, having a relationship with the Most High through symbolic stuff, like even when the deaf angel came when they were being delivered, you know, from Egypt, the deaf angel came. Most High had them take a lamb, slay it, and put the blood on the doorpost, uh, which was symbolic. 
you know, it's all symbolic. It's all symbolic, leading to the real lamb that would come, which would be the Messiah, uh, you know, that would come um, and, and lay down his life um, for, for, for us. And so, um, a comparison analysis is here. From graduating from a ceremonial relationship with him to the actual relationship with him, the bride. So now the bride is a little different from the nation. It's a little different because th this ministry is, you're filled with the Ruah. His spirit is leading and guiding you on a whole nother level. And you actually have the conclusion of all the ceremonial stuff, all, you know, the ephods and the, you know, the, you know, the tabernacles and, you know, just all that symbolic stuff, the new moons and the, all that stuff was leading to the solution dealing with sin. We're, we're, we're now living the bride and spouse to him. The bride is dealing with the solution, becoming his wife. Taking on his name and becoming his bride. And you know the word teaches, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. If he tell us don't uh, be unequally yoked together, don't marry someone outside of the faith, what makes you think he going to do it? So his bride is different. His bride lives the life. Like in Corinthians 6. Right. Again, it says every sin that a man committeth is without the body. Right. But he that committeth fornication sins against his own body. In other words, when you enter into the body of the Messiah, you know how these two shall become one. You know, you know, one flesh. The bride becomes one with her husband and the, and the, and the husband is, is, is the Messiah. Right. So. When you're inside of the body and you're sinning, the husband don't have sin in him and you can't bring none in. You'll be out first. Automatically, you get, you're not going to bring any sin in. And if you notice, like when the gospel come, right? When the true gospel come, which causes one to be pricked in their hearts, right? The true gospel come. It will call you to the carpet about your sins, how you living and going against the creator. If it's presented right, you, you, you're confronted with your sins. If you respond right, then you confess your sins, admit it, and then you turn from it. And that's repentance. You turn from it. You confess with your mouth that he's now master of your life because you're repenting. You admit I'm wrong. I've been wrong. You're turning from it and you're receiving him as not only the Messiah, your savior, the Messiah, but he's also your master. You're now going to obey him. Then according to Romans, the sixth chapter, you're baptized into his death. Meaning you're done. You're bought with a price. You're no longer your own. In hindsight, when you study the word, you find out that the flesh goes against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. They don't get along. So you can't do what you want to do because now you're espoused to the Messiah. And in, in Torah, when you're espoused, it's like being married. You're committed. You already belong to him. Hmm. So the shadow of what they should have been, they become. In the Messiah. Whatever symbols that insinuated the proper relationship with the Most High becomes 
the bride's reality. So the 30th verse say, 30th say, he said, he must increase. Walking in the Ruah, walking in court of the spirit must increase. It's going to take over, but I must decrease. Torah ministry is decreasing because we got the real thing now. We got, we got the real thing. We, we can, we can, we can, we can be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Because if any man be in the Messiah, he's a new creation. He becomes his, his bride. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. We got to learn how to decrease exactly with um, the word. Learning to rightly divide the word and decrease like Torah did because it represented like more of a carnal relationship with the Most High. Definitely was a requirement. But it was from a carnal perspective. It was from a commandments on stone perspective. Yah said something. What was on the stone was life. But because of the stony hearts of man, it wasn't working. That's why Romans the 8th chapter say, For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh. Wasn't nothing wrong with the commandments, but it, it wasn't accomplishable. Because of our evil nature, our fleshly nature, our sinful nature. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, Yah sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For what the law could not do. It couldn't present us blameless because we were blamed. We, we, we were sinful. So Yah sent his son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Where is sin at? In that evil nature? Our disobedience is in our sinful nature. For sin, condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law. The righteousness of the law. The, 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 the word... That was put on a stone, remove the stone and put it in your heart that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Reason why we don't walk after flesh, because that's where the sin is. If I walk after the flesh, I'm going to disobey Yah because the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit is against the flesh. These are contrary to one to another. So you can't do what you want to do. So now we're getting closer to a real gospel of us not being able to do what the heck we want to do. Don't be surprised when you're tempted because sin is condemned in the flesh. It's right there waiting to take over your life, to retake over your life. It wants to take back over. It wants you back in the club. It wants you back drunk. It wants you back committing adultery and fornication. It wants you back being a liar. Seeking to save your own life. Flesh don't care that, that, that the word told it that if you seek to save your life, you're going to lose it. It don't care. The flesh is the type of spirit that uh, uh, like to have its cake and eat it too. Where your cake at? It's gone. I ate it. Well, you in trouble then. I don't care. The cake was good. So the word is offering the graduation from Torah to the completion of Torah. He must increase. He must increase. But I must decrease. All the way down to invalid option. He must increase. Personal. Take it personal now. He must increase and I must decrease. Because again, truth be told, when we first accepted him, that was our decrease. In his increase, we were supposed to walk away from ourselves to follow him 100%. We were supposed to give ourselves away so he can use us. We were supposed to first seek the kingdom of Yah and his righteousness, knowing that he's going to take care of us. Because if we had the spirit that Esau had, which is self-preservation, self right? If we had the spirit that Esau had, 
seeking to save his natural life and didn't care nothing about his spiritual life. If we have that spirit, then we end up with a Malachi when Yah says, Esau, I hate. But Jacob, which is Israel, I love. That's, that's where you get that uh, theology, the theological position from. Those that seek to save their lives. I can be personally transparent with you and use myself. When I seek to save my life, right, there's nothing left for me but to do me. There's things that please me that are not right. I can't mess with me. There are things that are pleasing. When I save my flesh from truth, from responsibility, when I save myself from suffering, he said, if you don't, if you, if, if you don't suffer with me, you ain't going to reign with me. My carnal nature is say, I'm going to reign with you anyway. And I take a, a position of, of being like religious. I don't want to be religious. I, I really want a true relationship with him. In Israel, they're turning up the heat on us. It's getting worse and worse for, for true Israel. I'm talking about worse and worse. The heat has been turned up because the heat is going to cause his children to open their eyes and realize. You, you, you getting set up to die. You, you, it's going down. And if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. I forget their sins and I hear their land. See the truth is out now. And it's spreading. Of who we are and whose we are. It doesn't change. The platform for the Gentile. Because Yah so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish. But have everlasting life. This is a platform for everybody to get saved. And this is also a platform for real, for Israel to realize you're Israel. That's why you're getting gunned down, shot down, hunted, lied to, tricked. You don't know what you are. Think you're a Muslim. You think you're you think you're uh, a, a Hotep. You think you're an Egyptologist. You think you, you don't know what the heck you is because of sin. The only, only people that was uh, uh, shipped into slavery for 400 years, there's only one people on the planet that fits that description. But folks is so blinded by hatred that they, 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 they just couldn't fathom that who true Israel is. And then guilt is attached because how they was treated. But let's get the gospel right. Let's get the gospel right and let's live right. Let's us all repent. Having a form of yalliness ain't helping you. Having a form of yalliness being churchy is going to set you up for, for, for Matthew 7 and 21 when people can go down a resume of their religiousness. I've done many wonderful works. You know, I gave. I had and I gave. I shared. They're going to think that's going to get them in heaven. You know, I prophesied. I, I, I preached for you. I even cast out devils. And that's when he's going to break the news to him. I don't know you. We don't, we don't have a relationship like that. If you would have known the problem from the beginning in the garden was sin. And he's the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. It's still sin. It ain't changed. The devil's influence on the gospel has changed as far as it's effectiveness, <laughs> you know, in Revelations 17, they're talking about uh, the Babylonian mystery whore that got the whole world drunk on the wine of her fornication. This mystery Babylonian whore is a religious position. It's Catholicism. It's a religious position that causes the people on earth to commit fornication against the most high cheat on him in other words causing folks to cheat on him and they're drunk under the influence drunk on her doctrine and we got to snap out of it we, we we got to be able to see clearly the attachment of what the serpent said the serpent has a doctrine y'all and his doctrine is you should not surely die same thing he told Eve in the beginning. You should not surely die. 
convincing her to go against the most high and then gave her like eternal salvation. That's where it was born right there. He convinced her to go against the most high and then told her you should not surely die. And that doctrine is still perpetrated right now. That same lie has been redressed, painted and presented <laughs> and folks is eating it up. And that's why the world is in trouble. Keep trying to tell y'all that's why it ain't. No, that's why there's fluoride in your water, and it's more than fluoride. That's why there's a mercury in your air because they're hitting you with chemtrails. That's why they're grinding up baby. There's there's a human DNA found in in, in burgers. Human DNA, they, and the folks is doing it laugh about it. That's why you got a bunch of fake money in your pocket. So you don't know about stuff, what they're really doing. That's why they are, 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 are promoting racism. They're the ones that produce the movies that show racism. And the people that's producing the movies was the biggest slave traders on the planet. They owned all the boats and they, and they financed it, but they're pitching blacks against whites because they're trying because they're ready to destroy America. It's a part of the curse of the most high for what America did to his children. But in, on, from a natural sense, you got some people that's pushing that and it's working and it's going to work. And the only escape from it is repentance. So we got to learn how to decrease because we're in the end now to where it's about to hit the fan where we're graduating from Torah, Old Testament law, natural relationship with the most high. We're graduating from that to a spiritual relationship, taking the responsibility to walk in his spirit and Yah's love. And he is a spirit. And if you walk in his spirit, you walking in love. You're able to rightly divide the word of truth, see it for what it is, but you ain't holding no grudges. You're not walking around here hating. Vengeance is his. He going to recompense. All through Torah, it says the people that did that to his children going to pay. Not the ones that repent. All through Torah, it said that he was going to punish Israel if they turned on him. Well, they did, and he did, and he did what he said he was going to do. Ship him into slavery. His word is coming to pass flawlessly. And what we got to do is allow him to increase. We got to learn how to hide the word in our heart that we might not sin against him. That's what we got to do. We got to meditate in his word day and night so we can be like that tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit, the right action in due season. When you're being tested, when you're being tempted, you're still able to walk in love. You're still able to function without being accusational and, 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 and fleshly and tripping. You, you, learn how to, you, you learn how to do what uh, uh, the Messiah did when the folks was coming and hollering, crucify him. Hung him on the tree. He hanging on the tree uh, uh, dying. And he said, forgive him, Father, for they know not what they do. He wasn't hollering for justice. He came in the volume of the book. Yah's will was more important than his. Didn't he say it in the Garden of Gethsemane? He prayed to the Father, I, I, I would that this cup pass from me. This is rough. He was, he was exposing the difficulty of denying your flesh and still obeying Yah. So he was in there sweating blood. There's a stress level that potentially could be beyond death. Had he sinned, he would have died. That's how much stress was on him. He was, he was sweating blood. Blood vessels was busting from pure stress. And he was showing the difficulty in his flesh that he was undergoing just to keep the will of the most high because he concluded, like Esau should have concluded, not my will, but thy will be done. I'm going to let the word handle his business. See, he had to decrease as a man, being found fashioned as a man, the man had to decrease so the word that was in the man can go forth because he came in the volume of the book to do the most high's will and he kept it on the death, even the death of the truth. Conference recording stopped. Conference recording started. We ain't gonna let nothing stop us. He had, he had to press through. 
He had to press through regardless of the pressure, regardless of the trouble, regardless of how he felt. And we got to learn to do that. Y'all, come on. He said, he said, the word said, I must decrease. I, I got to. He must increase and I must decrease. I got to start studying to show myself approved. He must increase. He said, if you abide in my word and my word abide in you, you can ask what you will. We got to, we, we got to increase in the word, the knowledge of the true word, because there's false doctrine out there. This place is perpetrated with false doctrine, a false sense of security. Jude warned about it. He said it happened. Unyali men came in of old ordain and switched, turned the grace of Yah into lasciviousness, a platform for sin, because now the definition of grace is I'm a sinner saved by grace. The new definition of grace is I'm a sinner. He going to overlook my scandalous lifestyle, my disobedience, and I'm going to heaven as if the wages of sin is not death no more. When he told you out his own mouth, I'm the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. But the new grace, read it. They said unyoly men kept in unaware, tricked the people, and switched the definition of grace. They work for the devil, y'all. Because grace is we're transformed into a new creation. Grace is he gave us power over all sin. Grace is greater as he that's in you than he that's in the world. Grace is understanding that the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. So you can't do what you want to do. So he gives you the power to do what he told you to do. That's grace. Because before he baptized himself inside of you, you couldn't do it. But now you can because of his real grace. So he must increase. We, we need him. We need, we need to cast our cares upon him knowing that he cares. We can't take matters in our own hands. We got to depend on him for everything. Got to watch what I say. Got to watch where I go. I can't take his word slack. The word in Hebrews uh, um, 2 and 1 say, give the most earnest heed to the things which you have heard. At least at any time you should let them slip. G pay attention. He didn't have an ear to hear what the Ruah, his spirit is saying to the Ecclesia, the body, us. Get a most earnest heed. Take what he says seriously. If he tell you not to do something, don't do it. Get revelation knowledge of what he's really saying and keep it. Hide his word in your heart that you might not sin against it. Oh, it's the truth, y'all. It's the truth. Some folks think money rescued them. Nah, no, it didn't. And it's fake anyway. <laughs> it was just a whole nother conversation. No, no. Yalliness is not gain. <laughs> uh-uh, don't believe that. Yalliness is not gain. You gain when you have a relationship with the Most High and you walking in obedience. You walk in and obey, you obey him now. You're led by his spirit now. You're not led by self-preservation. You know how to be selfless. You know how to obey him and follow him. Oh, it's true, y'all. He must increase. In order for him to increase, you got to scoot over. That's why the first move he made when you accepted him is he baptized you into his death so you can get out the way. And the word said, reckon yourself to be dead. You got to see yourself as dead. You got to be willingly dead and stay out the way. You got to let his spirit go forth because you've been bought. He baptized himself inside of your body to use you, not to go to the strip club, not to drink a fifth of Patron, not to be cussing and acting a fool. He didn't baptize himself inside of you to do that. You could have did that. You was doing that without him, wasn't you? That was the problem, wasn't it? The way you was living, you was doing it without him. So he baptized himself inside of you. That's grace. That's unmerited favor. 
That's the ability to live his life before you couldn't. And he knew you couldn't. So he baptized himself inside of you. So all you got to do is utilize him. Don't grieve his spirit. Cooperate. Well, what he tell you to do, knowing that the flesh is going to lust against what he's telling you to do. Your evil nature has opinion. Who you going to serve? Who you going to follow? He must increase. He's willing to if you let him. You notice he didn't kick the dough in. The word said he stood at the door and knocked. <laughs> and if you hear him, hear his voice, because he's the word. Remember, he took the body off. If you hear, to adhere, if you hear his voice and you open up your heart, he's going to come in. Then he's going to give you the ability to understand his word. Because a carnal mind can't. He's going to give you the ability to understand his will if you ever decrease, decrease, if you ever humble yourself. He come and knock that door so he can increase in your life and present you blameless. He's the only one that's able to present you blameless. And how he presents us blameless is we cooperate. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Enduring temptation is you're cooperating with what he said. You tempted that evil nature wants you to do this, but he said don't. Blessed is the man that endure temptation, for when he is tested, when he's tried, he shall receive a crown of life, which Yah has promised to them that love him. You got eternal life. If you're willing to suffer with him, he said, if you don't suffer with me, you ain't reigning with me. And you're going to suffer in the flesh. Because the word said, he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. All these scriptures, y'all. He that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Because your flesh going to suffer in order for you to cease from sin. So the word clearly divides your fleshly nature from his nature. His word, his will for your life. The word strategically, rightly divides, it splits it. The word is sharper than two, any two-edged sword. It divides the soul from the spirit. It, div it divides. So now you saved with choice and the power to do either one. To live for him or live for yourself. To live for him or live for the devil. You can't serve two masters. You're going to do one or the other. So he said, um, he said he must increase. He must increase. And I must decrease. He must go on with the bride. Deliver them from the clutches of the law. That they might walk in the Ruah, walk in his spirit. In Galatians 5, he said, if you are led of the spirit, you're not under the law. He caused the law to decrease. If you live by the spirit, you're not under the law. The same word, that's the spirit, it's the same word that was on the tables of stone. But those that are saved, he got rid of the stone. So now the spirit can live in you, live in your heart via relationship. And when you have relationship, then the revelation of what the Ten Commandments was talking about is revealed. You're not under the law, you establish it. Because you're walking in pure love. And none of the Ten Commandments would you break. You don't receive them carnally. Because it was a carnal uh, representation of obeying and walking in the Spirit. It was a carnal representation of walking in the Spirit. It was the letter of the law. But when you take the stone away, then you have his law spiritually. Now, you don't, you're not governed by carnal commandments like that. They ain't even talking to you no more because the one that spoke the law is living inside of you and you receive power to walk in his love and display his love when his spirit came upon you and was baptized inside of you. So now you can stop in front of the temple and see a beggar there and minister to him and tell him, uh, get up, take up your bed and walk. Outside of the temple. Religious folks is going to pass them up and go in the temple to keep the law. 
those that have the spirit of the law, the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in them. The righteousness of the law is fulfilled in them. They stop and they love. They're not dictated by clothing and beards and uh, uh, carnal rituals. They're governed by the spirit of the creator, which is love, reconciliation. They're busy reconciling and loving on folks. That light, that different light is shining in this dark world. They're different. Able to get a last. Able to give the shirt off their back. Able to forgive when other people can't. Carnal people get caught up in the mess. It gets sticky and they get caught up in it. Rendered useless. Those that walk, lay by the Ruah, none of that stuff can stop you. You can love the unlovable. You ain't going to hate on a hater. Haters do that. I'm not a hater. I can't hate on a hater. I'm going to love a hater. I'm not going to overcome. I'm not going to be overcome by evil. I'm going to overcome evil with good. The Ruah, his spirit. Y'all, come on now. We Look, he must increase. And the only way he going to increase, he stood at the door and knocked. He didn't kick it in. The only way he going to increase is if we decrease. The gospel came and caused us to decrease. I quit. With my agenda, now he can increase. You confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. If you confess with your mouth that he's master and believe in your heart that death can't hold him. If you confess with your mouth that he's master and believe in your heart that he rose from the dead, you can be saved. For with the heart, one believes on to righteousness because my heart is involved. And I obey his word, and, and his word leads me into a righteous lifestyle. I obey him, and I'm walking in love. And with the mouth, confession is made on the salvation. Say it, because uh, uh, life and death is in the power of the tongue. Talk to y'all. I want to be saved. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of being religious, having a form of y'all, and it's denying the power thereof in a big old room with a bunch of sinners that's going to smoke a cigarette and start cussing as soon as service is over. It's going to be sleeping with each other. Talking about, hey, you can't judge nobody. Oh, that old devil is foolishness. Ain't nobody going to be responsible to live a life. Ain't no power nowhere in there. Oh, we all sinners saved by grace. You sound like the devil and don't even know it. You should not surely die. Sound just like the devil and don't even know it. I'm going to keep preaching that crap off y'all, though. Mess around and push the share button if you want to so more folks won't get delivered. Because cause he must increase. And he ain't going to force his way into your life. He knocked. He didn't come with a bat around. Come like SWAT and, and come through the windows. Smoke bomb. And got devils running out. No, he knocked at the door. If there was evil spirits in there, you let him in to clean them jokers out. He came in and started casting that mess out. Just like he did at the temple. He came in, them jokers uh, disrespecting his father's house. He made some cords. Uh, he took some cords and made some whips and drove their whole program out. But 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 he had to be welcomed in. It was his father's house. He had every right to walk in. We wasn't uh, uh, the father's house. That's why he was on the porch knocking. We became the father's house when we let him in. He can work there. Ah, oh, it's the truth anyhow, y'all. I ain't gonna keep y'all. But I wanted to share this word with you. He, mu he must increase. Man, I'm sick of me. And I'm not saying I'm walking in sin either. I really, like, the things that I, that I would be doing, how I'll be acting and living, I get sick of it. I get pulled on every day by me. But blesses the man that endureth temptation. I'm not giving in to me. I'm not under the influence of false doctrine. I'm not under the influence of this church crap. I'm not. I'm not. And I'm not going to be. And folks that's under the influence of that hate the way I teach. I'm not trying to make friends. Y'all sent me to make disciples and to tell the truth. To pull the lie off his name and his fame. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. And I'll walk alone doing it too. He must increase, y'all. Got to.
if you want to be saved. He got to in your life. He must increase. But I must decrease. He admitted what he had to do. And in order for him to do it, that's why he said, but I must decrease. We ain't going to both be sitting up in here running it. In order for him to increase, I got to decrease. He didn't have an ear to hear. You got to have an ear to hear. And the only way you can hear is if you humble and submissive. If Yah is trying to teach you and you don't let him because you already know. You, you already know how you've been living, don't you? Until the truth came in your life, then you start changing. And now the truth don't have free course because you fight against it. You war against it. Anytime the truth come to take you to a, 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 another level, if you have like a rebellious spirit, you're going to fight it. But when you humble, you're going to decrease. You're going to know that he must increase. He got to in order to save you, in order to continue with the transformation process, in order to make you into his image, in order to make you into that new creation. Old things have passed away, but whole, all things become new. The newness meaning it wasn't a part of you at first. And the only way that can happen is he got to increase. The more he increased, the more new you become in him. And in order for that to happen, you got to decrease. In order for you to decrease, you got to be humble enough to decrease. The transformation process stops in the people's lives all the time. I'm closing, y'all. It happens all the time. That's why the word in Ecclesiastes say, the race isn't given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. In matter Yahoo 24, it says, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. You can start off changing, but then when you get rebellious and, and your ears get cut off because you know, that's when the process stops. Then, then when that happens, then you're going to notice a difference in your life. The stuff that you had, you're going to lose it. Yeah, you're going to start going backwards. And you're going to see it in everybody around you. If you want him to increase because he got to in order to save you. Because we, we're we walking in perfection, which is a whole other lesson I'm not going to teach right now. But we must walk in perfection while being perfected. Because you can never stop getting better in him. You can always continue to grow. Always. You ain't cussing no more. You ain't getting high no more. You ain't getting drunk no more. You ain't running around with the wrong people. You ain't comm committing adultery no more. And there's still growth. Still studying to do. Still learning more. Still circumstances, situations going to hit you every single day. And you're going to need his rule or his spirit to overcome it. Where sin did abound, that evil nature did abound. His grace, his unmerited favor did much more abound because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. That temptation of sin is pulling on you. You're going to need him to get you through it. And he will. And he's faithful. He's not going to suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able, but with the temptation, make a way of escape that you might be able to bear. And it might be because you ain't got to. Some folks turn on him. But you can if you choose to. If you're willing to do what the Messiah did, sweat blood sometimes. I still ain't going to give in. Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that was their slave name. They refused. They said, look, king, I ain't even tripping off you. This threat, you finna kill me? You threatening me. Listen to this. The most high can deliver me from you. And even if he don't, I ain't turning on him. So do you. Because my mind is already made up. I got a prerequisite. When I woke up this morning, I said, this is the day that Yah has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And no threat coming from you is going to change that. Do you? Because I'm already done in him. Y'all heard that? Now I'm really finna go. He must increase, y'all. If you're going to let him. And I tell you this, the believer is going to let him. And they're not going to perish. 
He must increase. In order for that to happen, I know my job. Get the heck out of the way. I must decrease. Let's pray. Spirit of the Most High, we love you and thank you for this opportunity to come before you. It's humblest. We know how. Just done. Not even too proud to beg help. Coming to the throne of grace with boldness, making our petitions known that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. I promise you, y'all, this is the time help. Save me, save your children, continue the metamorphosis process, reveal the sin and will kill the sin through the sword of your spirit, which abide in us. Don't want to be religious. Don't want to have a form of God in this denying the power. You got the power to save us and present us blameless. And we want exactly that. Do it. Show up and show out. Do it. You have to increase that I might continue in you. In order for that to happen, I admit it, I must decrease. I must fast and pray and seek your face. I must read and study to show myself approved. I must forgive, not hold grudges. I'm gonna walk, walk with, with, a, with a grouchy attitude, disgruntled, spoiled. Uh, I must let go and let you. I need you. Kumbaya. Kumbaya. Abba, Father. My very own Father. Kumbaya and save us. Everyone on the sound of my voice that's willing to repent. Work on the hearts that are stony and don't want to repent. Give a mind to get out of the way. Let go and let you do what you do. We need you. We need you. We confess our sins. We're asking for forgiveness, knowing you're faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all sin. We're at the throne for that and that alone. We're not asking for cause, walk around the building seven times. We want you. We have a heart to seek you and all your righteousness, knowing anything we need, you got us. We denounce all sin, we confess it, and we walk away from it through the power of your Ruach. In the matchless name of Yahushua, Yahushua Hamashiach, we humbly pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And all may. That was the prayer. That was the lesson. Walk in and he'll be responsible for the blessing. Y'all push the share button, please. If you like to support the ministry, feel free to do so. If you want to do that, you know, a source of giving is the Cash App. And all you got to do is put in the dollar sign Yahua, Y A H U A. Dollar sign Y A H U A. If the Most High leads you to support the ministry. And if y'all want to talk, I'm down. Um, all you got to do is dial 302 202. 1102 extension 815648 again 302 202 1102 extension 815648 let her talk to you if y'all want to talk y'all continue to pray for me as i pray for you i passed the young great great to see you on sir love and respect you y'all be baruch and Braca shalom i'm gone